Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is RetroDog34 and in this week's video I want to talk about a discussion that has uh, taken place over on my Discord and in uh, my Twitch community. And that is what happens now that I hit CP160. So before we get into the video I want to give a huge shout out to the community that has helped this channel get a, over a hundred subscribers. Uh, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button I hope that I've earned it at so for at this point and you hit that subscribe button you could also follow me over at twitch at retrodog34 and on instagram at retrodog34 all right so i want to i want to give a disclaimer up front about this video this video is for new players this is not for players that have been playing like myself for over four years this is not for players that have been playing this game from since launch this is this video is designed for new players that have are getting ready to or have hit cp 160 so i want to make sure that this disclaimer is out there that you guys understand what you're getting ready to watch and what we're getting ready to talk about all right, so CP160, in my opinion, is your first real milestone in this game. Once you hit CP160, all your weapons and equipment are at max level. So CP160 is your highest of high level that you could possibly get. So what do you do now? So you have base game dungeons, DLC dungeons, trials, and arena. That's what we're going to talk about. So once you hit CP160... Where do you go now in the game? When do you start doing some of the harder content? When do you start doing some of the vet content? When do you start doing some of the trials and the arenas? So let's go ahead and start talking about the base game first. All right, so the base game really starts off, especially for the base game dungeons, starts off at level 10. So that goes from level 10 all the way up to CP160. You can do the base game dungeons, and a lot of them are already unlocked at level 10. You can do like Banner Sales 1, Fungal Grotto 1, Spindle Clutch 1. Those all three unlock at level 10. Now when like 12 through uh, level 44, these are all base game dungeons like Elden Hollow 1, Arch Corinium, City of Ash 1, Dire Frost Keep, Selene's Web. These are all unlocked as you're leveling your character up to level 44. This is where I talk about like the base game comes in. So in the base game, you can run these undaunted uh, dungeons with uh, group mates and start figuring out what your character is, starts to look like, right? You start learning your skills. You're leveling up your skills at this point. You're le uh, getting, uh, you're completing each one of these dungeons and you're getting a skill point, which is truthfully kind of great. So what else do you need to start getting out of here? Truthfully, any of the equipment that you get at this point in the game doesn't really matter until you hit CP160. Once you hit CP160, this is when you should start collecting some of that gear. Uh, for myself as a tank, I have a plethora of, you know, different type of armor sets, rings, uh, swords, shields, staffs, uh, destruction staffs, and different uh, armor that I have as a collection. But I didn't start collecting that until I hit CP160. But in the base game, you can level your character up doing the uh, base game Undaunted Dungeons. But here's the thing. You're, again, not going to keep any of that equipment. So at this point, you should start looking at, you know, what type of equipment do you want? S uh, spend it. Once you hit CP160, start farming that equipment. Now that you've seen it drop in the game, you know exactly what dungeons you need to start running. So like Banish Cells, uh, Crypto Hearts. Uh, Crypto Hearts is a great one, that, especially for a tank. You're looking for Ebon. Go into Crypto Hearts 1 and 2. It drops out of both of them. So you can start farming and getting that equipment now that you hit CP160. So at CP160, you should start looking at doing all the normal dungeons at this point. At CP200 for the base game, you can start doing, I would definitely start recommending to do, start branching out doing the vet dungeons and start thinking about what type of hard mode dungeons you can start doing at CP200. That's right. At CP200 is your next level or next cap milestone. You should start looking at doing some of those hard mode dungeons. So the next step is like CP300. You should easily start breezing through any of this base game stuff. Any of the base game 
uh, dungeons you can start breezing through at CP 300. You should not have an issue. You shouldn't have uh, any of those problems. At this point, you've already got your five piece sets. You've already got your monster helm set. You understand a lot of the mechanics. And you understand how hard mode works and how vet dungeons work. And you're starting to get those achievements, those uh, trifectas, you know, those no death speed runs and hard modes, conquerors, everything like that. You're getting all those done now. Now you're becoming more and more um, understanding of what this game entails as far as mechanics go. All right, so next up are your DLC dungeons. So now that you've gotten up to CP, right around CP 200, maybe 250, 300. 300, you should, st you should feel comfortable, like I stated earlier. Now we're going to talk about the DLC dungeons. You should start running your normal DLC dungeons at or around 300. DLC dungeons are some of the more some of the more complex dungeons. They have a lot more mechanics. They have a lot more health. Uh, I would definitely say the mechanics are a lot more difficult. I will definitely put that out there. Uh, but they start getting more challenging. So definitely wait until right around 250 to 300 before you jump into any of the DLC dungeons. Those are, you know, like Imperial City, uh, Shadows of the Hiss, uh, the Dragon Bones uh, DLCs. Those are like uh, Fang Layer, uh, Scale Collar Peak, Moon Hunter Keep, Ice Reach, Unhollowed Grave. These are some of the more, this is some of the hardest content in the game, especially if you're running this as a new player uh, coming from like World of Warcraft or EverQuest, EverQuest 2, some, any one of those uh, MMOs out there. This game doesn't teach you exactly what you're looking for as mechanics go, so you need to figure this out. The base game to DLC is a completely different type of game. So now you've, you've mastered and gotten better at those hard modes for that base game. Start out start off again slow go into the dlcs run them on normal learn what type of equipment drops learn what type of monster sets drop there start learning what type of those what those mechanics look like start learning about the dlc dungeons themselves and run them on normal farm all that gear on normal nothing changes in the game when you're running it on normal versus you're running it on vet there is no difference as far as the type of equipment. Remember, you're at CP160. This is cap for your equipment. So now that you have it at cap, you can start farming and doing that stuff on normal. So now that you've done it on normal, you should start you should be right around CP 400 to four, CP 600 when you start doing these on vet. I would definitely recommend waiting until you're right around 600 to start doing these on vet. Uh, vet DLC dungeons is a completely different game. Uh, and I've already stated that DLC dungeons is a different game than the base game. So when you run vet DLC dungeons, it is a completely different game. As far as the complexities go, you're looking at even more mechanics because again, not talking about the, the mobs or the trash mobs throughout the game. I'm actually talking about the boss bosses. So each boss has a new mechanic a lot of times. They have new ways of attacking. They have different mechanics that are going off. Different things are happening in the dungeon themselves. Uh, take, um, you know, Runes of Mazatune. You know, there's there's timers of certain things that are going to happen. So at certain percentages, there uh there's going to be an a attack that's going to happen, right? Or Fang Lair at, you know, when you when you get the dragon down to 30%, 25%, there's going to be something else that happens. Uh, there's a lot of them are triggered by health or by something that's going on in the game. So you gotta figure out those mechanics, especially on vet. At CP 600, you should also start branching out to doing some of that hard mode stuff. So getting those uh, speed runs, getting those no deaths, getting those hard modes complete. You add CP 600, that's when you should start looking to do some of that stuff. So right around there, you can start doing some of that hard mode content for like Frost Vault, Layer Marcelot, uh, Moon uh, Moongrave Fane, uh, Ice Reach. Some of these are easier than others. I would definitely rank Scale Collar peak hard mode more challenging than you know 
Imperial City hard mode or, you know, uh, looking at the Cauldron hard mode is more challenging than, you know, Marches of Sacrifice on hard mode. Every one of these is different, though. It's all based on your player skill and player experience. So whatever you bring to the table and will challenge you as a player, uh, it's going to be a little different for everybody. But the CP, as far as CP goes, that's about right where I would try to start doing, you know, hard mode stuff is right around like CP 600. Okay, so we've hit CP 600. Now let's talk about the trials. So for trials, for normal trials for the Craglorn, I'm only talking about the Craglorn for CP 600. I would definitely look at like Hellra. I would definitely look at Sanctum uh, Aphidia. Uh, and AA, uh, I always mess this one, Arthenium Archives. At CP600, you can run those on normal. You could definitely uh, get into a 12-man group, and you already have your five-piece, you already have your monster set, so you're already looking for some type of equipment that drops in trials. Look to start doing those right around 600. 600, again, is one of those milestones. So once you get uh, more advanced, you should be sitting right around CP 800. That's when you should start looking at some of the other trials. You should start looking at like Cloud Rest, Halls of Fabrication, uh, King's Aegis, um, Rock Grove, one of the newer, the new trial. I love this trial. It's one of my favorite trials. But you should start seeing that trial right around CP 800. You can start running that and start farming that gear. Cloud Rest is a great one. Uh, Sunspire is a great one for CP 800. 7 to 800, you can run those. You'd be fine on normal with a lot of those group uh, guildmates or groupmates out there. Uh, you could even run a lot of these as uh, CP 600. But I would run these on VET until you're right into the marks of... 1100 to 1200 i wouldn't touch the vet dungeons or trials until you're right around 1100 or 1200 cp that's a huge leap again you're looking at running these trials from like you could start doing them at 600 but i would definitely recommend doing them at like 800 900 so you're hitting into the thousands now on normal uh, trials for vet i would hold off until you reach right around 12. Uh, that's when you, your character starts balancing itself out for vet content, right around 1200. Uh, right when you get into the 13 mark is when you should start, you should really start doing vet uh, trials. You should start looking at doing a lot of those vet trials at right around CP 1300. Uh, if you're struggling, definitely look at what the, what's going on with your character. Is it the the gear? Is it you know your enchantments? Is it your traits? What's going on with your character? But right around there, you should be fine running uh, right around CP 1200 or 1300 for trials and when you get into the hard mode i'm going to be completely honest with you i would be apprehensive to say to start doing some of these hard modes right around again 1300 uh depending on which hard modes you're looking at i ran hell raw citadel uh at you know right around uh 1200 hard mode uh you can do these uh but again Different mechanics start to be applied, so different. Uh, it's a different game when you get into the vet in the hard mode compared to the normal stuff, especially for trials. There's a lot more mechanics. Again, as you guys see, there's a trend here. So you have that base game that teaches you this. You get your DLC that teaches different mechanics and different understanding, and then when you do those those uh, hard modes and those... Um, they're, they all change a lot of times with the health and different mechanics. Same applies for trials. The normal trial is not the same as your vet trial. Your vet trial is different from your hard mode trial. There's a lot of stuff, a lot more mechanics, a lot more health that needs to happen, that goes into effect, and a lot of things change for the dungeon and trial itself. So you have to pay attention to exactly what's going on. Or... I'd hate to say it, you might end up getting boot from the group if you're not if you're not catching up with that stuff. So definitely pay attention to what those mechanics look like for vet and hard mode when you reach CP 13 or CP 14. Uh, if you're really good, you could probably get away with CP uh, 1200 at that point. All right, so let's go ahead and, and talk about arenas. 
There are two solo arenas and two group arenas. We'll go ahead and talk about the solo arenas first. So you have Maelstrom Arena and Battleshorn Hollows. These are your two solo arenas. I would start doing Maelstrom Arena on normal right around 600, CP 600, maybe into CP 700. Uh, definitely start doing the Vet right around CP 1000 to 1200. Uh, as far as Vatashon goes, I would wait until CP 800 to maybe CP 900 to do this on normal. And unless you're, again, this is, if you're a new player, you're coming into this game differently. Um, I would definitely start waiting until it was right around 1200 to do Vet Vatashon Hollows. You need the extra champion points, uh, for like your mitigation and stuff like that, uh, that, the champion points give you to get through the uh, vet battleshorn hollows as far as the group ones you got black uh, black rose prison and dragon star arena if i were to look at these two i would say do dragon star arena i would start off at like maybe 600 for uh, cp 600 for dragon star arena on normal and on uh, black rose prison but as far as vet goes you could probably get away with vet uh dragon star arena at right around 600 to uh, 700, maybe right around 800 uh, to do the Vet Dragon Star Arena. But as far as Black Rose Prison, that is a hard group uh, arena, especially on Vet. You're looking at maybe waiting until you're right around 1200 to do Vet uh, Black Rose Prison. Um, again, CP 1200 for Black Rose Prison would be my recommendation to new players. All right, so I hope this uh, video has helped everybody, and especially the new players. Again, I put the disclaimer up front uh, for this video. This video is really geared towards the new players that are getting ready to hit CP160. So I hope this helps those new players coming into ESO, coming in from World of Warcraft or other MMOs. This game is different. This game is not like your grandfather's MMO. This is a completely different game. There are a lot of different mechanics. There's a lot of different fighting going on. There's a lot of different mo uh, monsters. You have to understand the complexities of each of the dungeons. They all kind of act a little different. But again, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video at this point, and I definitely appreciate that. Uh, if you haven't, uh, definitely jump into my Discord, and where we talk about Elder Scrolls and other type of MMORPGs. Uh, we chat every day about different type of builds that we're looking at, you know, different type of uh, games that we're looking forward to playing as far as uh, what's on the horizon, uh, what type of events that are going on. Uh, definitely hop into the Discord and chat us up. Uh, without further ado, I definitely appreciate you guys watching the video. And like always, happy adventuring in Elder Scrolls Online.